Hi friends. Um, uh, we're going to delve into module four again today, um, but I wanted to give a special shout out to my new friends at Francis Gottke. I recently learned that not only are my Lakeland friends watching my videos, but also my new friends it, at Francis Scott Key in kindergarten there. And um, I'm glad to be with you during this time. I hope you're enjoying the videos and just a shout out and hello to our Francis Scott Key friends. All right, let's get started friends. We are in module four, the continents. What makes the world fascinating? You see I'm holding two new books today, friends. We're gonna study two new continents this week, Africa and Antarctica. Which brings us to a new focusing question this week and for lessons nine through 15, we'll have the same focusing question. What interesting natural features can people see in Africa and Antarctica? I said the word natural features, friends. That's kind of new vocabulary for us. So I made us a vocabulary card to help us remember those special new words. Natural features. What does that mean? It's special parts of nature on earth. That's like our mountains, rivers, forests, deserts. And we learned about some of those natural features in Europe and Asia. Mount Everest um, and the Gobi Desert to name two natural features on earth. We're gonna learn about natural features this week in Africa and Antarctica. So our, that leads us to our content focus question for today. What do I notice and wonder about Antarctica and Africa? And we've been doing that since um, the beginning of school, since module one, right? We've been noticing and wondering in text. Um, so what we are seeing in the text and any questions or wonderings we have about the text. So one thing that you can do at home, because we can't have the back and forth kind of talk like we would in our classroom, is talk to your parents or family members or siblings after we read the story. Ask them any questions that you might be wondering about um, these two continents. And hopefully we'll cover them, but it's just important to think about things you might be wondering about those continents. Thinking about text helps us become better readers. So let's become better readers and again, be thinking about anything that you notice. What do you see? What is special in this te in these texts? We're going to start with Africa, but I want to say before I get started that both of these texts are by Rebecca Hirsch. Um, they are informational texts, just like Europe and Asia were written by her as well, um, that are going to teach us more about these continents as we travel the world together. Africa. Welcome to Africa. Africa is a continent. It has more than 50 countries. There's a caption below this photograph right here, friends. It says, Buffalo drink at a watering hole. Wow, I noticed that the land here looks very different than where we live. I noticed that there's buffalo outside. We have buffalo here, but they're in the zoo, right? Not right out in the land of Africa. This is pretty cool. The largest pieces of land on earth are continents. There are seven. Africa is the yellow continent on this map. People of Africa. Many people live in Africa. Some live in cities. Cairo is Africa's largest city. It is in Egypt. These children go to school near there. This is the Step Pyramid is near Cairo, Egypt. I'm noticing that these school children have uniforms that look different than the ones that we wear at Lakeland. That's interesting. I like their clothing. Some Africans work on farms. They grow corn, rice, and other crops. Here, a mother farms with her baby. Wow, that baby must see a lot of interesting things on the farm. Wild places. Africa has deserts. The Sahara is the world's largest desert. It is very hot and very dry. Friends, look at these camels. 
camels walk across the Sahara Desert. Africa has grassy places called savannas. Savannas have wet seasons and dry seasons. Savannas have few trees. I notice that it's full of grass, but you're right, just this one tree. There are rainforests in Africa. It rains almost every day in the forest. Many kinds of plants grow there. A national park rainforest in Africa can be seen here. Wow, I notice that there's a lot of different types of natural features, deserts, rainforests. That's interesting. Amazing animals. Africa is famous for its wild animals. Gorillas live in the forest. And here's a silverback gorilla in the rainforest. I wonder if they're called silverbacks because this guy's back here looks silver. Wow, buffaloes, camels, gorillas? That's a lot of really cool wild animals. And now, zebras. Zebras, giraffes, and lions live in the savanna. And here's a herd of zebras here. Water and land. The Nile River in Africa is the world's longest river. People live near rivers so that they can get water. Girls fill jugs in the Nile River, fill water jugs in the Nile River. Wow, friends, can you imagine having to go to a river to get your water? That's very interesting. I wonder how long they have to walk to get there or how heavy the, jug the jugs are. That would be hard work. Kilimanjaro is Africa's tallest mountain. People climb this mountain. They visit Africa to see its amazing animals, people, and places. Here's Kilimanjaro National Park in Africa. Mountains, rainforests, and deserts, rivers, very many natural features. Modern marbles. The Library of Alexandria in Africa is a very modern building. It has both sharp angles and smooth curves. Columns hold up part of the building. The Library of Alexandria can hold millions of books. It also has art galleries and museums. Whoa, in the um, library, that's very interesting. Last page, friends, meet a meerkat. Meerkats live together in family groups. Meerkat families work together to gather food and raise their young. You can find meerkats on the African savannas. Wow, friends, I learned a lot about Africa today. What did you notice about the text? Maybe bring something to your live sessions to talk to your teacher about. Um, talk to your family about it. What did you notice about the Africa text today? And what do you wonder? What questions do you have? All right, so the last thing we're gonna do today is also quickly read our Antarctica book. Thanks for staying with me about and learning about these two opposite countries. We went from the world's hottest to now the world's coldest. Antarctica. Welcome to Antarctica. Antarctica is an icy continent. It has no countries. Wow, no countries? Here an emperor penguin lives in Antarctica. The largest pieces of land on earth are continents. There are seven. Antarctica is the yellow continent on this map. People of Antarctica. Few people live in Antarctica. Most are scientists who come to study the continent. Planes bring food and supplies to Antarctica. Wow, that looks like a big plane. Visitors also come to watch seals and other amazing animals. 
These are crab eater seals and they rest on the ice. Wow, I wonder if those people are cold. They're really bundled up, especially on the coldest continent. Adventurers ski in Antarctica. Some ski to the South Pole. It is one of the coldest places on earth. This is Felicity Aston, and she skied across Antarctica in 59 days. Whoa, I wonder how she felt doing that. Amazing animals. Antarctica is famous for its penguins. Rock hoppers live by the rocky shore. Rock hopper penguins can hop from rock to rock. Killer whales swim in the icy water. They hunt fish for fish to eat. A killer whale can swim very fast. Wow, he looks big. Ice, wind, and snow. Antarctica has fierce winds that blow the snow. People must wear bright coast, coats to see each other. Here are two scientists work in the Trans-Antarctic Mountains. Brr, they look cold. Antarctica has tall mountains. Most are covered by ice and snow. Mountains of the Antarctic P Peninsula. Here's a tall mountain. I wonder if people try to climb these mountains. Antarctica has thick sheets of ice. Giant ice chunks can break off into the ocean. These chunks are called icebergs. And here's an iceberg in the Weddell Sea. Learning from Antarctica. Scientists come to Antarctica from many countries. They study the ice to learn about climate changes. And here the scientists measure floating sea ice. Wow, it looks like they're floating on a piece of ice. Scientists study animals and weather too. There is so much to learn from Antarctica. Countries will always work together to protect this icy continent. Here scientists study a group of emperor penguins. I wonder what those penguins think about those scientists. Here's another modern marvel, just like we've seen in the other continent texts. Here it is. Scientists in Antarctica work at the Princess Elizabeth Station. The stainless steel walls have many layers to keep heat in and to keep cold winds out. Windmills wind on tall poles catch the wind to make electricity for the station. Meet a wandering albatross. Wandering albatrosses are birds. They lay their eggs on the islands around Antarctica. The male and female work together to raise their young. They have the longest wingspan, that's how wide their wings go, of any bird. They fly far looking for squid and fish to eat. We certainly learned a lot about Antarctica today and about Africa. What wonderings do you have or questions do you have about each of these texts? What did you notice about each of these texts? Hmm. Can't wait to learn more with you this week. See you later, friends.